In my last video, I built the shoulder and elbow for this robot using cycloidal drives. This enables the arm to move on the X and Z plane, but now it's time to build a rotating base so we can move the robot to any X, Y, Z coordinate that we like. As I want to use this robot arm to hold a camera, the base is going to have to be very accurate and have no wobble in it at all. The bases I've seen on the internet up to this point tend to either use belt drive or gears, and both of these come with their own issues. Belt drives rely on non-3D printed hardware like the belt itself, and traditional gears can exhibit backlash, which, well, it, it just affects the accuracy of the movement. In the past, though, I've played with eccentrically cycloidal gears. This takes the disc from a normal cycloidal reducer and simplifies the drive dramatically by sweeping the nodes around it here and then using a single pin with the same sort of sweep on to drive it. I've made a video on how these work and how to design them, and I'll link it up in the corner. Seeing the two parts mesh and rotate is kind of hypnotizing, and it's a really nice way of getting high reduction with a minimum of parts. The pin here is basically a single tooth gear but without the sliding friction that you'd get from a worm drive. I didn't use them for the elbow and the shoulder, as they're not quite as compact as the normal cycloidal drives for the same torque and reduction rates. But this doesn't matter for the base. In fact, we want the base to be quite large to give our arm some stability. I want the whole arm to fit inside the gear. So I've taken the eccentrically cycloidal gears and made this huge gear, which when paired with this little pin here will give us a 20 to one reduction. To hold it steady and stop any movement though, we're going to need some bearings. The one on the bottom is medium size, and I'm using a cheap thin wall bearing from Amazon for this. But the one on the top is big. As I said before, I want the robot arm to actually fit inside this. It just braces it against any side to side movement, and trying to buy a bearing of this size here proved very expensive. So I made my own. In a previous video, I experimented with the best way to make 3D printed bearings, and I settled on a four-piece design with a cage holding steel BBs in place while still letting them rotate. It can be a little bit fiddly to assemble, and the balls have a habit of escaping at the worst possible moment. But, I mean, they perform surprisingly well, especially considering the cost. Right, I've assembled all the parts we need. Let's start getting it together. The first thing to do is set these little heat inserts into the holes in the housing. Right, now they're in, we can take these screws out and start putting it together. We'll start with the stepper motor. Now the stepper motor's on, we can insert the large bearing. I've made a bit of a mistake on this. This bearing should really be on the other side here. But if it moves, We'll put some super glue on there, it'll be fine. Next, our little pin who just pushes onto the stepper motor, the key on the shaft, and our large gear should just insert. Goes nicely into the top there. Little rod to hold the bottom of the pin, and a bearing. That bearing then pops into here, as does this and hopefully it just presses together. Those heat inserts hold really nicely in this. But these tiny little M3 screws should do a great job at holding it all together. And there we have a base for the robot arm. We'll hook it up to a stepper motor driver and see if it works. So I've got our little base here hooked up to a the M542 stepper motor driver, which then again is hooked up to an Arduino Mega, running just a little bit of code to rotate back and forth. Let's see if it's gonna work. So that seems to rotate really nice and smoothly. Let's hook it up to the robot arm. Of course, I did what I always do and forgot to lubricate this. So I've stripped it down off camera and just added a bit of this PTFE grease to everything. Now, last time I used the robot arm, it had a little bit of wobble on it. I've tracked that down to basically being these bits here moving around, the inside lid of the cycloidal drive moving, and this bit here being a little bit flimsy. So I've printed off some new parts and on the cycloidal drive, I've now got the lid so that it will go into here and then screw into place. I'll put these together off camera and, well, attach it up to the base. Let's see what happens. 
Okay, all the modifications are done to the shoulder joint here and I've replaced our 3D printed bit here with a nice piece of aluminium tube. That should be really strong now. The shoulder joint is now bolted through to the base and we should be good to go. Let's put the camera on. Cool, I've now got two of these DM542 stepper drivers. I haven't got a third, unfortunately, so I've rigged it up to the base and to the shoulder. So we'll get movement on two of the axes for now. In the next video, I'm sure I'll have a third one to go. So let's see what it looks like. Well, that seemed pretty smooth, didn't it? More than good enough for a bit of motion control. Anyway, please join me next time when I'll be making a camera gimbal to replace this janky setup at the end here. And I'll hopefully be getting some decent electronics together so we can control all of the different axes of the robot. Go on, just click those like and subscribe buttons. You know you want to. See you later.